Today, I'll be attempting the maximum difficulty rebuild. The New Orleans Saints. On paper, this team does not look like a horrible rebuild. They've got solid players and a solid overall. But the key to the difficulty here is cap space. Derek Carr is on a $144 million deal. That's a crime. In 2026, this man is going to have a $56 million salary cap hit. Lattimore deserves his contract. I'm with that. So does Ramchick. I like him. Tackles are hard to find. But Eric McCoy being the fourth biggest contract? Cam Jordan's 34 and he's hitting us for 17 million this year. Michael Thomas is 30. He's an 84 overall. He's not getting any better. He's expensive. Basically, this entire team consists of incredibly expensive old players. And we don't have a franchise quarterback. But all hope is not lost. Let's focus on the good right now because we're going to have to rebuild this team to a Super Bowl before this video is over. So first and foremost, the Ohio State product, Chris Olave. Such a good wide receiver and an absurd wide receiver in franchise. Olave gets really, really good. He's six foot with great speed. I expect him to be a superstar X Factor 99 overall when we're headed into the Super Bowl. So Olave, I hope you're a lifelong saint. I hope we can afford you down the line. Alvin Kamara has always been one of my favorite running backs in the league, but unfortunately, he's at the exact year where you start to regress. Once you hit 29-30, the overalls go like that. So I can't really see us keeping Kamara in the long run. Same with Jamal Williams. I don't know if we keep him because he's the same age as Kamara and he's just a little worse than Kamara. But this game is flooded with good young running backs. Honestly, our quarterback room is atrocious. Jameis is not the future of this team. Derek Carr is not the future of this team. I also love how the Saints use Taysom Hill, but this man is 33 years old playing like four positions. I don't really see the future of Taysom some hill here either i'm happy about our offensive line there's lots of star guys up there trevor penning young out of northern iowa he'll definitely be on this team for a while andres pete is actually getting paid a lot of money to be super mid defensively there are a lot of good things to look at like isaiah foskey out of notre dame i think i need to get my young guys involved very early on this team so that we can save some cap space and try to keep this team good for example like demario davis cam jordan tyran matthew they're great high overall players these guys are either retiring or regressing significantly in the next two, three years. We just can't keep them. One guy I do really like, though, on this defense, Paulson Adebo out of Stanford. He's going to be really good. And Marshawn Lattimore is nasty. If I can, you know, retain anybody by the Super Bowl, I think it should be Marshawn Lattimore. I really want to still have him. Hopefully, Brian Breesey out of Clemson can play really, really well, and he can be a star interior D lineman. I'd love to still have Paulson Adebo, and I'd love to still have Chris Olave and pieces of this offensive line. But other than that, dude, I don't know who's gonna still be on this team. My initial adjustment is I'm gonna start Isaiah Foskey over Carl Granderson. He's certainly worse, but he is a power rusher, which is good for the 4-3. He's hidden dev, so he's at least star. Actually, he is star. He's not superstar. Also, to ensure this is max difficulty, my draft class strength is staying on normal. I always go strong, but not for this one. And we will be changing the trade difficulty. By default, it's set to normal. We are setting it to hard. So there will be no cheesing the CPU with egregious trades. Although honestly, Madden's trade system is so bad. We still might be able to cheese a little bit. It'll just be harder. And that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to get Derek Carr off this team. Derek Carr is not the future of this team. He's 32 years old. And I'm going to trade with a team who does need a quarterback. I want this to be realistic. For example, I'm not going to let myself trade Derek Carr to the Bengals. They would not do that shit in a million years. But I do believe there is a team that would trade for Derek Carr. I think that team is the New York Jets. Whether Madden thinks so or not, I don't know, but the Jets in real life need a quarterback. There's no way I could get a round one for Derek Carr, right? I'm just gonna see. Yeah. Derek Carr and Michael Thomas is about halfway towards a first round pick. The Saints don't have a third or a fourth round or a seventh round this year. They also don't have a second round next year. Yeah, we're kind of like pick depleted too. I found a team who wants Derek Carr. The Jets didn't want him. The next best team I could think of was the Panthers. They were willing to give up a second round pick for Derek Carr. I I'm honestly so fine with that. Next guy I want to trade is Demario Davis. He's just too old. Let's get something out of him before he regresses or retires to be a family man. I think realistically, the only team that would want a guy like Demario Davis, a playoff contender, kind of like how the Rams picked up Eric Weddle before their Super Bowl. I'm going to try and get their first and second round. This is probably way too much. I put the trade difficulty to hard. I guess they are, they're, they're late first and second rounders most likely since the Bills should be good. Is a 34-year-old Demario Davis really worth a first and a second round pick? I, I probably could have gotten a third rounder out of that too. Holy shit. Those are going to be the only adjustments I'll make for right now. 
Here's the Saints roster going into this season. So no Demario Davis, no Derek Carr. I think both of those were a good call. Low key, I could trade Cameron Jordan too. He's just such an OG Saints player. I want to keep this rebuild semi-realistic too. I don't think the Saints would be trading Cam Jordan. I think he's going to stay a Saint until he retires. Let's see how this season goes. It'll probably be a difficult season. I do need to change my team schemes a little bit. I'm going to switch my offensive scheme to vertical power run and my offensive playbook to Dallas Cowboys. Rashid Shahid is our slot wide receiver right now. Under most circumstances, I actually really like that. I'm going to make it Olave. I want Olave to get superstar ASAP. And honestly, this season is going to be so bad for us that Olave might have a really good season. Like, we'll be losing every game, so we'll be passing every game. I'm going to move uh, Shahid to wide receiver two. He's really good, dude. Rashid Shahid has the potential to be nasty. And Michael Thomas is going to start to get phased out. I like Michael Thomas, but 30 years old, only an 84 overall, star dev. It ain't going to be too much going for him. All right, let's see how year one goes for these New Orleans Saints. How does this happen in these rebuilds, bro? I swear, every time I try to tank, I end up nine and eight and in the wild card. So the NFC South shocked the world. And actually, we're, I mean, the Falcons are 12 and five. That's what we've got in the wild card. We've got one last hoorah, which is making a playoff push for a veteran. We've got our first playoff game. We're facing a rival in the playoffs. Before I look at the league stats, I want to know if I'm going to make a deep playoff push. See, I kind of figured. Okay, so we lose the Falcons there. Jameis was ninth in the NFL in passing. Bro, Jameis low-key fucking launches the football. Jameis had a not bad season. If Jameis wasn't old, I would consider this. Kamara had 1,230 rushing yards and 10 touchdowns. This is what I'm saying, man. I really like Dallas Cowboys because you get a lot to your running back and then you get really, like, look at this. 1,100 for Olave. Shahid had 1,006. Michael Thomas had 806. That's awesome. Looks like Zach Bond was our tackle leader, followed up by Pete Werner. Our linebackers are really involved, and my linebackers aren't good. So Pete Werner is young, though. Pete Werner is young, and he's a decent overall. We might hang on to him. It wouldn't be a bad idea to draft a linebacker, though, try and get somebody really good, or maybe somebody in free agency. We got to the quarterback a lot less than I would have liked. Cameron Jordan's still supposed to be good. It's this is a shockingly low sack count. I expected a lot more out of him. Isaiah Foskey, he had four. He's a rookie. A rookie with four sacks is actually pretty solid. 14 TFL, 68 tackles. Isaiah Foskey comes in fucking second in defensive ring of the year voting. Oh, that one's so good, dude. And then Brian Breesey must have been solid too because he came in sixth. Our defensive rookies... Actually, a very good season. Oh my God, the Falcons were legit, dude. Have you ever seen this? Chargers versus Falcons. Rishi Rice gets offensive rookie of the year. Tyree Wilson, defensive rookie of the year. Dude, that's weird. I literally have never even seen the Chargers like win it. Available salary cap, negative 40 fucking million. Yeah. It's actually ridiculous. We have to trade Cameron Jordan. We can't even sign free agents, obviously. That's actually crazy. I've never been in free agency and legitimately not had the option to even attempt to sign anyone. Oh my God. All right, so year one's in the books. No dev trait changes. I low-key thought with how good of a season Olave had that maybe he'd get a dev trait, but he does not. Kamara does not, despite his good season. Andres Pete retired, so we're down a guard. So we need a guard. We need a quarterback, obviously, but that's been on my radar. Ooh. Ooh, Marcus May. Those six interceptions out of Marcus May. He does get a dev trade upgrade, so that's huge. Uh, Pete Werner gets a dev trade upgrade up to star, so he will be a linebacker on this team for a long time. Foskey is star. Breesy is star. My first pick is round one, pick 21. I know exactly who I want. My pick is round one, pick 21. Here's the problem. The guy I want is this guy right here, Dylan Graham out of Ole Miss. He's the third quarterback on the board, and he looks solid. He's got elite strength, elite throw power, good speed, great jumping, poor acceleration, but his stats are solid. A deep, B medium, B short. This guy looks good, but the mock has the Vikings getting him, and then, the, and then it has the Giants taking Keith Young right before that, but none of these mocks have Dylan Graham going anywhere but 20. So think if I want to secure getting Dylan Graham, I got to get that Vikings pick. There we go. All right, so it cost me my first rounder, and then a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. A couple of those in next year's draft to get the first round that I wanted. I only traded up one spot. Loki, I gave away a lot for that. That's where that hard trade difficulty comes into play. But I actually think that's going to be super important. This is why this was so important. Because they were going to take Dylan Graham and the next best quarterback is a day three projection. Loki, Chris Hand out of Alabama does not look terrible, but Dylan Graham just looks a lot better. I have a really good feeling about this dude. I'm hoping this is my offensive rookie of the year. Yeah. Oh, he's fast. Dylan Graham, Ole Miss. Whoa. 
He's got a fucking cannon. 99 throw power? This dude's a beast. Vikings take Eddie Chapman. That's who we were projected to take if we didn't take him. We could take a guard. We could not really take a wide receiver. I don't see that being the move. Here's Ben Wood. Uh, I'll probably end up moving him to a guard. I'm really just most excited about the great strength. And he's got A awareness, A lead block. I guess I think this is a pretty high overall tackle. That's the hope. Hoping he's hidden dev. Huge. I love how that's great speed for a tackle. 90 strength out the gates, hidden dev. Uh, we've, we've locked up an offensive lineman. Okay, that's good. Next pick is round two, pick 17. I think this is the one from the Panthers. Stanley Holcomb out of USC is an elite speed middle linebacker. I like this dude a lot. He's a field general middle linebacker. Exactly what we lost in Demario Davis, except he's 21 out of USC. I love this dude. Please be hidden down. That's a, that's a sick middle linebacker. That's such a good pick. 91 speed, 88 excel. Stanley Holcomb. Got a middle linebacker. Got offensive line. Got a quarterback. I, can, I still could use a guard, low key. I'm gonna take Tyler Wilkerson. He really doesn't look that good. I'm not gonna lie, but he's, he looks okay. If he's hidden dev, he could be Cam Jordan's replacement. Yeah, I knew I didn't like that pick. Especially with that face scan, bro. Who fucking signed off on that? Who said, yeah, let's make a human being look like that? And that's our first whiff, though. This is a normal draft class, and I'm three hidden devs deep right now. I'm, I'm actually really excited. Okay. Okay, I gotta remember that this is a normal strength draft class. Dylan Graham looks actually really good. 72 overall quarterback on normal is not bad at all. None of these guys are generational. Ben Wood, 72 overall. Holcomb was probably my best pick. To get a round two pick 17, 72 overall middle linebacker is actually nasty. That's huge. Wilkerson's a full-blown fucking whiff. Joey Calloway. Oh my God, I simmed through one of my own picks. Oh shit. The CPU took me Joey Calloway, who's a hidden dev. Joey Calloway, hidden dev corner. And the last pick was Carlos Franks, who sucks. Eddie Chapman. Wait a minute. This is the wide receiver that the mock drafts had us taking. And this is who the Vikings took right after us. He's, he's good, man. 77 overall. You know what I like though? I'm not seeing a single quarterback in any of these. We may have gotten one of the better quarterbacks. All right, here's the year two roster. There's a lot of weight on Dylan Graham's shoulders right now. I'm not going to lie. But with how often he'll be passing, dude, if he puts up a Jameis Winston-esque season, he's easily going to win offensive rookie of the year. That's how I feel. He just can't throw a lot of interceptions. Ben Wood's looking good. So we made a good replacement on the O-line. And then defensively, Stanley Holcomb was a really good pick. We just need these two to develop. I don't know. We're going to have to get more linebackers in the next draft because I, I can't even sign anyone. I can't trade either. You can't trade when you have negative cap. Like, even if I wanted to unload Cameron Jordan, I can't. I don't want to cut him because that's so unrealistic. When would the New Orleans Saints ever cut Alvin Kamara? What are the, what, like, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Sorry, guys. I'm really sick but I really don't get why we are nine and eight. This team is shit. Actually, now that I think about it, this makes the most sense. This is why the Saints are such a tough rebuild because they're perpetually mediocre. Dylan Graham had the damn near same stat line as Jameis. Actually, he was better than Jameis. 27 for 11. Jameis was 25 as well. Kamara had an insane Olave 1316. That ought to get him a dev trade upgrade. Dylan Graham's the guy, bro. Dylan Graham's the guy. This is our franchise QB. Stanley Holcomb, 124 tackles, two TFLs, one and a half sacks, an interception. Dude, and a forced fumble. Could Stanley Holcomb win defensive rookie of the year with that stat line? That's really good. Kim Jordan, five sacks. Foskey had three, two and a half for Breesy. If we got the offensive and defensive rookie of the year, offensive rookie of the year, it had to be. It was always Dylan Graham. Damn, I'm not nearly as close as I thought I would. So Marco McCord, that insane corner, the 80 overall corner, he actually got second to Don McGee. I don't watch these games because I kind of just assume I'm going to lose. Yeah, I was correct. 42 to 7 got fucking smacked. I can't sign anyone in free agency. So we're headed to the draft. I finally got us in the positive for cap space. Here's what we had to do, though. Oh, oh, oh. Shit. Oh, wait. Duh. He got offensive rookie of the year. Dylan Graham is superstar. Dylan Graham has great accuracy. He's 99 throw power, and he's superstar for winning offensive rookie of the year. Oh, this is so big. I'm actually going to give him a field general upgrade. This usually gives you accuracies, which is I would prefer here. Oh, wait a minute. Offensive rookie of the year did not give him a dev trade upgrade, which means he was already superstar. He came out the fucking gates superstar. Stud. I love Dylan Graham, bro. That's the future of the Saints right there. Kamara is regressing already. Olave is certainly not regressing. We had to let Michael Thomas walk. Michael Thomas had to walk. I, in fact, he might have retired. I actually don't know. So we do need another wide receiver because Lance McCutcheon cannot be the third string. Offensive line is still the same as it's been and it's honestly pretty damn good. Juwan Johnson is an 80 overall and is progressing well. So that's great. Cameron Jordan is still here and we have positive cap. Paul Sinadibo is now superstar. So we have very good DBs. We've got an almost 99 X factor. We've got Paul Sinadibo and then Elante Taylor is actually a pretty good 
like depth guy. Tyron Matthew is regressing fast. So free safety is going to be a position of concern. Left outside linebacker is already a position of concern. Marcus May looks great. And then Breesy and Foskey are getting really good. I'm so glad we had them. Without those guys, it would feel like this rebuild is actually straight up impossible. I'd like to get rid of Kamara. I'm going to go to the trade center. I'm, I'm going to try and like offload even more here. Okay, Cam Jordan's got to go. Cam Jordan's got to go. Kamara's got to go. These cap hits are fucking gigantic because I'm funny. I have found that drafting linebackers can be very difficult. I'm going to see if we can't get Tuli Tuipolotu off of the Chargers. So it cost us two third rounders, a fifth, and Kendra Miller, but we got Tuli Tuipolotu. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I ever could have gotten an outside linebacker in the third round who's going to be as good as him. And he's 22. He's 22 years old. He's an 80 overall. Round one, pick 19. Our next pick is not till round six. So this is going to have to be an amazing pick. Damn, this guy was not supposed to be available. This is why I traded for Tuli Tuipolotu. This guy was not supposed to be available. I will say, though, this is a power rusher right outside linebacker. So doesn't really fit the scheme unless I switched him to right end. I'm kind of thinking of picking up Marcus Foster and moving him to right end. We eventually, we really do need the Cam Jordan replacement. This guy is a 6'5", 250 speed rusher. It's like a Michael Parsons build. That guy's going straight to right end. That guy is going straight to right end. I might even, I'm going to try and trade Cam Jordan this year. Oh, this guy's a fucking beast. Let's go. Oh my God. And the computer got me a 70 overall wide receiver in the sixth round. Are you hitting death? Oh. Trevor Flanagan out of Georgia Southern. That's actually not bad, bro. This guy's a dog. Marcus Foster is a 76 overall. That was an amazing pick. 86 speed, 89 excel, and he's going. Let's see what it looks like at right end, because that's where he's going right now. That's the best linebacker available, too. Next closest is Gary Austin and Rutledge. These guys are third rounders. What, where are the first round linebackers? Your year three, New Orleans Saints. Olave superstar. Dylan Graham is superstar. We've got the new Marcus Foster, who's already got plus one from Morrell. Tuli Tuapolotu is now on the squad. Not exactly excited about getting traded. We got Holcomb. We got Werner. Foskey, Breesy, Marcus May with the dev trade upgrade, Adebo with the dev trade upgrade. Just be rid of Cam Jordan once and for all. I'm sorry, Cam Jordan. I love you, man. Here's what basically just happened. The Steelers said, we will take Cameron Jordan and his contract from you. You can have a second round pick in exchange. So they're going to go make a deep playoff push with Cam Jordan and I get a second round pick out of it. I'm cool with that. I think this could just be a really big year for Dylan Graham and Olave to go crazy. And then we can worry about wide receivers in the draft or free agency. Because we actually have cap space now so we can actually this is the turning point season three in my defense we finally properly sucked we went five and twelve how does that hold up statistically dylan graham not a good season 26 and 14 much worse than last season at perry led my team chris olave 978 mccutcheon had a lot yeah i think i think the wide receiver depth definitely hurt us there a little bit Stanley Holcomb had 150 fucking tackles, eight TFLs, a half a sack, and four interceptions. Werner had four sacks and four interceptions. Nine sacks for Marcus Foster. You bet your ass that's defensive rookie of the year. Breesy with four, Foskey with three. That's huge, dude. Marcus Foster wins defensive rookie of the year the whole league. The Chargers almost won the bowl. And in 2024, it was the Chiefs. I forgot to check that. I apologize. We are continuously getting rookies of the year. No dev trade upgrades. Olave. No dev trade upgrades. Kamara's only getting worse. Our wide receiver depth is horrendous. I have to do some other wide receivers. Uh, but wow, look at holy shit. We've turned this defense around so fast. I, my offense is just not there yet. Matthew has to get replaced. Werner is superstar. Holcomb is superstar. These dudes had 150, 130 tackles respectively. They killed it. Marcus May is superstar, but he's old. He's regressing now. Adebo's great, and Marcus fucking Foster is a superstar. Did he get superstar from this, or did he come out the gate superstar? So Marcus Foster was star dev, but you can see right there, defensive rookie of the year gave him superstar. Three fucking upgrades. Uh, talk about the Cam Jordan replacement, bro. Oh my God, we got another 10 years of just elite edge rush. 101 million available in cap space. Wow, Mark Andrews is a free agent. Doesn't really matter to me. I need I need a wide receiver. So I'm on week two of free agency. It looks like my computer actually picked up Romeo Dobbs, which is exactly what I would have done. Loki, no, I don't even need to pick up another one because A.T. Perry is going to be third string. So Dobbs is great. I don't got to do anything drastic quite yet because my team is still like, team is still pretty solid. We can just hang on to this cap space and sign some nuclear free agents next season.
I like, I like where our team is and we have round one. Kerry Zeigler out of Florida is a very high pick. He's projected round one. Kerry Zeigler out of Florida. The best safety in the class. 92 speed, 91 excel. That was actually, that was truly a no-brainer. We had to go with him right there. And our next pick is a high pick in the second round. Evan Drummond's out of USC with some greats and some solids. Let's go. We are going to have so much cap space to sign a nuclear free agent. I don't expect this season to be that great either, but I think next season, free agency, trade away some of our draft picks for a really good player and draft recap 2026 rookies. Ooh, Jesus. Oh my God. And the CPU drafted me a fucking beast. Halfback to replace Camaro. And they got me a wide receiver. Dude, I keep forgetting that I have these back-to-backs and I keep simming through my own pick. Dude, Zeigler's a 79. That was such a good pick. And Drummond's a 74. Was, oh my God. Best player in the class. Kerry Zeigler. That's so amazing, bro. Let's go. Let's see what we can do about Tyran Matthew. Tyran is so old. He's an 85 overall. Yeah, maybe I could have gotten more out of that. But honestly, I want this to be realistic. Like you guys say I get fleeced, but what team in the right fucking mind would trade like a first round pick for an 85 year old safety so marcus made 33 years old but he's superstar we actually got him to superstar when he had that six interception season i'm gonna put him on the trade block before the season starts i want a running back an arm and a leg is what that cost we got the jaguars super good rookie running back they have 99 overall travis etn so i figured they would be willing to trade him but dude cost me jose bell marcus may first a second a third a sixth. We are at the turning point in this rebuild where it's time that we started to ball out. Take a look. My offensive line is ready to go. I've got a 96 overall wide receiver, an 89 quarterback. We signed Dobbs in free agency. We've got A.T. Perry. I think we needed a serious halfback. We got the 80 overall rookie out of NC State. 6'1", 231. That's a big boy. Got Zeigler at strong safety. Drummond at free safety. Defense is looking really, really good. Uphill was an understatement. We climbed the mountain, man. We are 11 and 6. Taking on the Lions in the wildcard playoff. Must have been a spectacular season for us. Dylan Graham, massive step up. 36 and 9. That's so good. Frederick Claiborne. Dude, he might have got offensive rookie of the year with this. 12 touchdowns. 1182, such a good season. Dylan Graham starting to use his legs a little bit too. Receiving, it was all Olave. That's how we like it to be. A.T. Perry and Jawan Johnson had by far his best season. 874 and 11. Dobbs was solid as well. Defensively, Stanley Holcomb once again leads. Six TFLs, no interceptions or sacks. All our sacks came from Foskey this time, leads the team. Then Marcus Foster, then Tyler Wilkerson. Marshawn Lattimore with four interceptions, three for Debo. We make it through this round, I might I might look in and watch. I don't know if this team's really ready to... Team might be ready. 28 to 25 against the Lions. Graham wins NFC. Here's our rivals, dude. Our rivals, the Falcons, who took us out the first time. Let's, uh... Frederick Claiborne, what? Oh my God, that dude's an X-Factor. Dude, it costs an arm and a leg to get this fucking rookie. He's an X-Factor. He hasn't won any awards yet. He must have... Came out X-Factor. Oh my God, he actually came out X-Factor. Holy shit, he's already up to an 88 overall. Defensively, Drummond. Drummond, the lower overall, is superstar. Zeigler is star. This might have been one of my most smooth rebuilds so far. Like, it, it definitely is difficult. We're not Super Bowl material yet, but we're killing it. Our draft picks have been excellent. Trades have been good. This game starts out with a Falcons touchdown, returns with a Saints turnover. Um, let's play a little bit of defense. I want to see my boy Holcomb. That's a 99 overall BJ. We got to stop him. Oh, okay, they don't run it. Desmond Ritter steps up, and the field goal is good. All right, one final clamp. One final clamp. Marshawn Lattimore's over there. Pete Werner's right here. Wow. Looks like we're probably... Yeah, we are going to lose this. Falcons are a big rival for us. They're in the NFC South, and they beat us in the playoffs now twice, and we're not supposed to be ready for the playoffs. We were waiting for free agency. This is fine. Tajay Spears is the best free agency available. Yikes, these free agents are not good. Michael Gallup is superstar? Michael Wilson's the next best wide receiver. I either... Ooh, I want Jalen Hyatt, bro. Jalen Hyatt's 25, 96 speed. 96 XL, and we can sign him to a big deal. So he's on this team for a while. Hopefully he gets, maybe get a dev trade upgrade. I know he already wants to be on the team. Let's just go neutral, but give him a long deal. I want you on the squad. I'll overpay just a little bit. I really want Jalen Hyatt. 
I'm going to pick up Byron Young as well. Beautiful. I don't have a D-tackle too right now, so I think that's a good call. I'm going to trade away my pick for this absolute haul of picks from the Raiders next year. I'll probably flip those into a really good player. I just don't know who yet. Got a first, a second, and a seventh out of that. CPU picked me up a 72 right guard, a 73 center. Not bad. Best player in the class was 83 overall corner. Next best was the round one pick one quarterback, then the round one pick two corner. Had a pretty significant fall off after that, but I got a lot to work with here. Let's go see what edge rusher is available. So Foskey left in free agency, but Foskey is superstar. I'm going to try and get my boy back, man. I miss him. What about just a first rounder? That's actually insanely close. Oh my God. Fuck yeah. Got my boy back. Let's go. Here is your 2027 New Orleans Saints. We still have Chris Olave. We still have Juwan Johnson, and we have almost all of our offensive lines. Defensively, we're looking like absolute studs. I think my defense is kind of what carries here. I have too much cap space for this to be the season, Loki. Like, it could be the season, but if I won it all right now, I'd actually feel bad. We have like 90 mil in cap. There's just no good free agents to sign. There's, there's nobody. I thought for a second I had a buy. No, dude. The Falcons are really just dominating the NFC South right now. We go 7-10, and 10, which is an improvement. But like I said, we didn't really use free agency yet. So I'm chilling. And it looks like we got great overalls still. Whoa. Really bad season for doing Grant. Frederick Claiborne had a spectacular season. Olave was okay. I wonder why he had such a bad season. Defensively, it's Holcomb all the way, and then it's Werner Holcomb had a much better season than last time. Six and a half sacks for Breezy, five for Foster, four and a half for Foskey. Glad to have him back. D-line really did play well. Three interceptions, Lattimore, two for Holcomb. Yeah, that was just a really bad season, unfortunately. I guess shit just happens. So, end of 2027, we have the exact same team that we walked in with, and we have so much cap for free agency. I just gotta hope it's a good free agent class. Last Last free agent class sucked. The best player was Ty J Spears, followed up by a kicker. DeAndre Swift is nuts, but dude, I can't get rid of Claiborne. Claiborne's actually a 97 overall X Factor. He's actually better. Do I pick up a tackle? Just boost the O-line casually? Yo, do we pick up, do we pick up Stefan Diggs X Factor for a Yes, we do, bro. Yes, we do. Two-year deal. He's lightly interested in the team. Let's give him a player-friendly deal. Let's bump the salary, bump the bonus. Make him an offer and let's see how strong that is. So out of what he's looking at, we are obviously the top contender, but our rival, the fucking Falcons, want him to. Justin Tucker's in free agency. That's not a bad one-year sign. Not a bad two-year either. I'm going to give him a two-year. He's not going to get much worse. Kickers don't really regress. I actually have to pick up this dude, Johnny Claxton, because my left guard walked. I forgot about that. He's not interested in the team, so we're going to have to make him a big-ass deal. I'm going to pick up Ricky Stromberg. Diggs signs... Justin Tucker signs, Stromberg signs, huge free agency. This this might be the season. I expect this to be the season, actually. I'm going to keep Jalen Hyatt in the rotation. I like Jalen Hyatt. I'm going to take Dobbs out of rotation, and Diggs will come in at wide receiver three. See, it doesn't really matter. I don't, I don't really know. With this playbook, they kind of all get reps, so I don't think this matters too much, but got an X-Factor wide receiver. Diggs is going to regress, though. Diggs is going to regress fast, so we got to win it this year or next year, or we're going to have to really continue this rebuild. Here's a new look offense. Only the, the really the only big change here is Stefan Diggs, but I'm so excited about it. We also got Stromberg on the offensive line. Defense is unchanged. Werner goes X-Factor. Pete fucking Werner goes X-Factor. God, he's been amazing. He's got run stuffer. 92 overall. Dude, the computer went dummy. The computer drafted me a corner in the second round. It was a 70 fucking six. Oh, you're... Your normal dev, Marquis Milstead is insanely good, and he's normal dev. Then we got uh, Joe Castro, the 76 overall wide receiver. Computer's going hard. The computer's ensuring that this team will be a dynasty for years to come. 92 overall New Orleans Saints with a 95 offense and an 89 defense. I think this is our year. Gotta make the playoffs first, though. I'm gonna do my prediction. We're going 10 and 7. We're going 10 and 7. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I did a little better than I thought. 12 and 5 is our best record yet. Ooh, Dylan Graham's best season by far. Not as many yards as he's once had. I think he had 4,300, but 43 and 5 is like MVP. What about the whole league? Could he have actually won MVP with that? Or did somebody else go crazy? Bryce Young, 34 and. No, he, dude, he actually could have won. No, Mahomes will get it. 40 and 6 with 4,501. Threw the most touchdowns in the league, though, and a less interceptions than Mahomes. Frederick Claiborne, a 15 touchdown, 1,700 yard season. Yeesh. 
1,315 for Olave. 905 and 8 for Diggs. Probably not what he's used to, but that's okay. 862 and 7. Juwan Johnson, a great season. And defensively, it's all Holcomb. It's all Pete Werner. It's all Lattimore every single time. Five interceptions, Lattimore. Four Pete Werner. One for Holcomb. Marcus Foster. Yo! Finally in the double digits. 12 sacks for him. Seven half breezes. Six Fosky. Wow, we killed it. Dylan Graham gets fucking second in MVP voting to Lamar Jackson. Tough, tough, tough. 93 overall Saints taking on the 86 Vikings. They've got Jordan Addison, Daniil Hunter at X-Factor. And then it's that wide receiver, Eddie Chapman. We actually, we traded up with the Vikings for Dylan Graham. So they could have Dylan Graham right now. I'm only going to play a little bit here. And then we'll go into Sim. Just want to try out all my boys, man. We got so many studs out here. Clamping up. Big, big hit out of Pete Werner. I tried to tell Tyler Algier. Somebody get home. Somebody get home. Fosky. Fourth and 18. And I'll play a little offense now too. I'm, I'm giving a pretty big kickstart here. I usually don't do this, but we've assembled such a sick team. I really do want to get some reps, reps in with the team. Juwan Johnson, Chris Olave, Stefan Diggs, Frederick Claiborne, Jalen Hyatt. Look at Juwan Johnson. Oh my God. Wait a minute. Juwan Johnson. Juwan Johnson. Oh my God. One play touchdown, Jawan Johnson. I'm, dude, I, I, there was a point in time where I was thinking about drafting a tight end. I'm so glad we didn't. Let's let Frederick Claiborne get the two point. You got three down linemen against one of the best running backs in the league. Probably the best running back in the league. What is wrong with you? Eight to zero. Let's see what the rest of this sim has in store. No scoring until the Vikings get three. Saints get another tutty. Vikings get one of their own. It's 18 to 10. 25 to 10. 25 to 13. And that's all she wrote. Our first playoff win. No, our second playoff win. We did. We did beat the Cowboys earlier. But there's a first playoff win that we watched. And wow, did we have an incredible game. Almost a perfect passer rating for Dylan Graham. Three touchdowns. Anthony Richardson was actually amazing too. 31 for 42. 300 yards. He threw the ball a lot. Frederick Claiborne, 15 for 71 and a touchdown. Dude, I'm telling you, when you have these insane running backs, they really change the sim stats. Uh, we had a sack out of Foster. We had a sack out of Foskey. Big dub, and now we take on the 12 and 5 Buccaneers. Shit. Tristan Wirfs is a 99, and Winfield's a 99. Devin White, Vita Vea, Jordan Love, Ashton Hampton, Jamel Dean, Peter Rose. Travis Banks, D'Angelo. It's a cool team, but if we don't get past them with all the firepower we have, I'll be shot. Okay, three for the Bucks. Touchdown for the Bucks. Wait a minute. 13 0. We got to score. 13 7. Stop. Score. 14 13. Second and six. Tampa Bay's turned the ball over once. Looks like we're just punting. We're, we're having some empty drives here. This is a really close game. Divisional playoff. Dylan Graham unloads. Caught by Jalen Hyatt. Ooh, little cut block. Dylan Graham rolls out and still. How the fuck did you throw that? 14-13, all the starters are in. There goes Frederick Claiborne. There goes Frederick Claiborne. Unloads. Caught. Hit him. I don't like how it went to Claiborne, but it went to Frederick Claiborne. Oh my God. Okay, so it's still a one possession ball game. They have all three timeouts, so. No fucking way. Oh my fucking God. Catch his ass. It finally happened to me. In my first ever rebuild, the Rams rebuild, I did that to the computer. And every single rebuild since, I've never seen it until right now. We've got the pass rush going on Jordan Love. He checks down over the middle. Nice throw. Get his ass! I expect so much more out of Holcomb. He just watched Jordan Love start to take off. But, 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 the biggest play is right here, right now. Two-point conversion. We stop this. We win. Hand off. Stuffed! Who was it? Benedict! Oh my God, it's one of our safeties. They go for the onside, caught. Oh my God, let's go. Jalen Hyatt hands team, let's go. Oh my God, that's so amazing. All right, that's ball game. Solid QB play by both QBs. Another three touchdown game for Graham, but uh, Frederick Claiborne, nine attempts, 62 yards, 6.8 yards per carry. Honestly, like you should have given the ball more. Oh my God, we're taking on the Seahawks. Seahawks is who we traded for Foskey. So we poached Foskey off of them and we have a literal mirror matchup. 95-0, 91-D, 93 overall. They're going to have like a 99 Kenneth Walker and what else? 99 Jackson Smith and Jigba, 99 Witherspoon, 99 Larry Ball. Oh my God, that quarterback from forever ago. Jermichael Colbert, D tackle. Oh my God, they drafted so well. Seven to seven, 14, seven, 21, seven. Seahawks score, 28, 14, 
28 to 21. It looks like we're basically one hand off away from a win here. This is a close game. Come on, Freddy. Why are we running play action? Why don't you give it to the best running back in the league? And now you're going to punt the fucking ball. Or can you hit that, Justin Tucker? In the rain, though. This is a 59-yarder in the rain. No, we're punting. Oh, my God. The fucking ball off to the 99 overall halfback. Punt dot. Punt fucking dot. Punt laser beam. Maybe coach knows something. This is the game-winning drive. They have only one timeout, and they are on the literal one. It's got to be a run up the middle. Holcomb, go get a safety and put this fucking game away. Or... Or somehow Kenneth Walker will run for 16 yards out of his own end zone. They got to go no huddle. Clock is not their friend. We need a sack. Get to Larry Ball. Second and 10. Big heave. Caught. Kenneth Walker is going to get out of bounds. Okay, throws over the middle. We like that. Nothing deep, nothing deep, nothing deep, nothing deep, nothing deep. That's deep, guys. What are we doing? Right? Right? Oh. We got the abilities. Somebody's got to bust through that. Oh, he's in bounds. Huge. Do they call the timeout yet? They do. There's the timeout. They got about two plays left. They got to go end zone every single time here. Because if they throw inside the field of play, they're going to regret it. They got to go end zone. Don't you check that down to Kenneth Walker. Don't do it. Throws it away. That burnt seven seconds. That's huge. I don't know how many plays they got left now. 18. 15. Throws it away again. Pass rush is getting up. Dude, he has 46 pass attempts. Oh my God. Third and 10. Get home. Get home. Clean pocket. No man's land. He's got one play left. They got to go basically Hail Mary. Because you can't throw this in bounds. Please, everybody drop back. You know what they're doing. Pressure on. Could have been intercepted by Holcomb, but it doesn't matter. Because that's the ball game. Saints, hang on. And head to the Super Bowl. Claiborne really wasn't that effective on the ground. Noah Fant was insane. We had a turnover, though. Holcomb with 11 tackles. One sack from Foster and an interception pulse in a depot. That's what won us that game. Dude, what has gotten into the Chargers? This is their third Super Bowl appearance. They're fucking eight and nine. Dude, did they, like, draft somebody who's just... They drafted that one corner, right? But other than that, like... Justin Herbert, Derwin James, Asante Samuel, Sean Slater, Joey Boza, Kenneth Murray, Alton Garvin. Dude, why is this team in the Super Bowl? I don't know what's going on here, but whatever. Taking on the Chargers in the bowl, baby. Come on. Come on, Saints rebuild. Let's end in 2028. I like this. We're so close. We're so close, boys. We're so close. We're right there. 3-0 Chargers. 6-7. 14-6. It's getting ugly. 17-6. They have all... That's literally... They have all field goals. They have four fucking field goals. They have not gotten in the end zone. There they go in the end zone. 34 to 20 in the big game. And I think Frederick Claiborne can put this away. Oh, we're in the all black unis. This looks so sick. Hand it off to my boy. Hand it off to my fucking boy. Claiborne, third and one. Wait, how is it third and one? How did you just teleport to third and one? Claiborne owns your poverty fringe. Oh, that was second. First and 10. Oh my God. Oh my God. Why are the Chargers in the Super Bowl at eight and nine? This team is mid. That Seahawks team was so much better. All right, second and 11. I don't, for some reason we're handing this off. I actually don't know why. We're just rubbing it in. We should still be in victory formation right now. Yeah, we're straight up rubbing it in. <laughs> we said, fuck the Chargers. Uh, we just wanted more yards. <laughs> and the final play is a Dylan Graham kneel. He had 11 rushes, 45 yards, and a touchdown in the bowl. No way we hand this off. Do it. Fucking hand it off. Do it. Do it. <laughs> One second left in the Super Bowl. Let's go! The Saints are Super Bowl champions. Dude, that is a tough rebuild. That is actually a really tough rebuild. Those first three years are just like absolutely wasted. I honestly think this rebuild would have been, would have taken me at least one or two more years if we didn't hit on every draft pick. Because if you whiff, if, like if I had whiffed on QB and he was normal dev or even just star, that would change a lot. But him being superstar progressed like crazy. Foster wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. That was huge for him. Pete Werner got Superstar X Factor. We had a lot of things go right for us, and it still took six years. Dylan Graham, you earned it, buddy. I'm sorry, Jameis. I'm sorry it couldn't be you. Dylan Graham is geeked up on the podium. Let's look at those Super Bowl stats. Who's going to win MVP? So Graham's got 277, two touchdowns. He probably gets it. I'm so glad we traded for him. Frederick Claiborne, 13, 123 and a touchdown. It should be him. It really should be Frederick Claiborne. I don't know if he's going to get it, but it should be him. Defensively, Werner had 11. Holcomb had nine. Werner had an interception. He could get it too. Greasy had a sack. You do, yeah, honestly, 
It could be Pete Werner with 11 tackles and an interception. It could be Frederick Claiborne, and it could be Dylan. I have no idea what it's going to be. Let's find out. Holy shit. Look at your ending New Orleans Saints lineup. Claiborne, the insane rookie that we traded for. Dylan Graham, now with 99 Superstar X Factor that we drafted. Diggs out of free agency. Olave, a true New Orleans Saint. Jalen Hyatt's even looking really good right now. Juwan Johnson regressing. But Superstar, offensive line looks beautiful. And defensively, Holcomb hits Superstar X-Factor. Werner hits Superstar X-Factor. Tua below two is really, really solid, but he stayed normal dev the whole time. Zeigler, Drummond, Lattimore, Foskey, Brian Breesey, Byron Young, Paulson, and Debo, and Jose Callaway. Who got Super Bowl MVP, though? Who got Super Bowl MVP? I genuinely don't know. I think it should be. It should be Frederick Claiborne. Dude, that's rigged. Honestly, 280 yards and two touchdowns is nowhere near as impressive as 13 carries, 130 yards and a touchdown. That's 10 yards per carry is a back. I don't know. All right, boys. Amazing. We got our bowl. I appreciate you guys watching as always. Uh, hopefully, I'm not sick for the next rebuild. I'm sorry if that was annoying. I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.